Hey guys, we're live here with the Galveston Bay Fishing Show. Eric Valentino. At Eagle Point Fishing Camp. I'm Eric. This is Captain David Dillman. Galveston Bay Charter Fishing. And my lovely wife, Rebecca, the producer of the show. She's behind there. the scene. Honey, is everything okay? You know, Facebook Live just doesn't want to let you rotate, so I gotta check on it real quick. To make sure it looks okay. Okay. But go ahead and go on with the show because YouTube's watching right now. So I'm going to double check on this real quick and see what it looks like. So last week, David was talking about he was trying to get back into the groove of things. And a had, little bit of progress has been made. Had, Not much, folks. He had a little eye surgery. David, why don't you give us an update? I know the people that watch the show do care about you a little bit. A little bit. Um, eye surgery went well. The growth was not cancer, which is good. Thank God. So they cut my eyelid open, took out the growth, and sewed me up, and uh, good to go. So UTMB did a heck of a job. Yes, they did. All right. Excellent. UTMB Ophthalmology. Well, we're glad to have you back. Yay, good to be back. 100% David can now see, so he might be able to see those fish slicks a little better. A little bit. And he, um, and he might not be telling me that a fish this big is a six pounder. <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, I had a six pound trout. But anyway, so yeah, I'm still in and out, you know, dealing with my mom a little bit, but things are getting better. Get back on the water tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to fishing the saltwater derby. Yeah, David had his boat out of the slip with lift here at Eagle Point for about a week he was getting his service done on his yamaha four stroke and i have a yamaha four stroke i know that can be a little painful you got the service taken care of okay mine mine checked out good what about yours mine's not doing so good <laughs> but that's a different story yeah everything's good i'm ready to go put the boat back in the water rain good so looking forward to getting on the water tomorrow we had you know first little front of the year made it through and um man it's nice out there now it's been beautiful today <laughs> and i'm coughing a lot because <laughs> i've been sick yeah they have you know <laughs> you got two little kids this time of year <laughs> parents are going to get sick and if i get sick from them i'm trying to stay away <laughs> as much as possible honey right, did you get I'm everything lined out i'm almost there but you guys keep talking about the catch start cut talking about the catches the okay week. We're going to get down to the <laughs> the fishing this week. We had on Monday, David with that catch by Mike Cassell. Mike Cassell and a couple of his buddies, was it? Yeah, Mike Cassell was fishing with uh, Joy and, and two <laughs> friends that were in town, and they had a mess of fish. They had trout, they had sand trout, they had a, a few redfish. And they said the bite was really good. Yeah, I was not here, but I heard about it. And uh, somehow, some I think Mike, somebody sent me a picture. Live shrimp under a popping cork. And they said that the fish were not super deep, but relatively deep. So they were fishing about five or six foot deep. And, you know, don't get, don't get uh, lackadaisical on getting uh, your cork set too shallow. You need to make sure that you're still uh, relatively deep in my opinion. David's been shallowing up a little bit. Because I'm fishing probably a little shallower water than most. So, I mean, it just depends on the water that you're fishing. Yeah, so Mike's catch was really good. That was on Monday. And then on Wednesday, we had an incredible catch by Captain Wendy Marshall. That was yesterday. Who'd Wendy fish with? Pat Flanagan. Pat Flanagan. Yeah, Wendy called me up. I, in fact, I was here Wednesday, first time back in a few days. And I was here Wednesday, opened up, and um, drove down to a delightful thunderstorm. And it was raining and pouring. And then, you know, started kind of clearing up a little bit. Wendy called me probably, I guess, 830. And he goes, hey, how's the weather? And I said, well, it looks like it's clearing out, Wendy. And he goes, man, we may try to go. And I said, well, you know, I, I would. And I said, I don't think anything's going to hold you back. The wind's not that bad. I said it cleared out, so we could, they got down here probably 10, maybe 9.30, and headed out, loaded up, got some bait, headed out. And he was like, he looked at me, he goes, where should I go? And I said, ah, Wendy, why don't you go to Trinity? 
into the wells where he caught them like a few days before. And he goes, you think it's going to clear? And I said, man, I said, if it comes, it's going to come from the northwest, so you better watch it. Yeah. And uh, he ended up getting back here during the storm hit, and so they kind of got a little wet, but they made it back. They said they caught a few fish up there, but a lot of um, smaller trout. And they were fixing to load up and go home. And I looked, and I'm like, hey, Wendy. I said, man, this weather's nice. You ought to think about going back up. I think Eric said, told them, hey, load up and go back out. And sure enough, they did. You can tell the rest. Well, let's make sure that you all heard what David's saying. He David transitioned over into talking about Wendy's trip specifically. And so when Wendy went out before the major front frontal boundary hit they were catching small non-keeper speckled trout once the frontal boundary hit they had come in let it rain let it blow they went back out it was blowing a, only about four to five miles an hour yeah they were and it was beautiful and they went out there and they caught you know well over 75 80 sand trout but they kept the sand trout that were of nice size. They said they started off at 10 inches and bigger, and then they, they went up as much as, as bigger than 14, 14 inches. 14, 15, 16 inches. Yeah. Fish. So they, they had a heck of a trip. They did. They had a good trip. So and I want to say they didn't even buy any more bait. So what bait they took, they caught their sand trout on. And then knowing Wendy, he probably took one of the smaller sand trout and cut it up and started using it for bait. Because typically you start using cut bait. A sand trout will eat a sand trout. So you, you'll start catching bigger sand trout with their with dead bait, with their own kind. Well, what you were saying to me, which was pretty cool, is back in the day, people would come just for the sand trout. That was a big thing so back in the day. It was a really, really big thing. When I, when I first started fishing out of here in 87, and there used to be a group of people that would specifically come September, starting about the end of August, but August, September, October, and even into November, depending upon the passages of the fronts. And they would go to the Ailey's, and there was four or five of them, and it was like the little fishing club. And they would yeah. actually, they'd carry four or five 48-quart ice chests, and they would go to the Ailey's, and they would come in here, and they would buy 30, 40 pounds of dead shrimp, Per boat, not all of them together, per boat. And they would load the boat full of sand trout, redfish, croaker, drum, whiting. Whiting. And it was just, I mean, they it, they didn't go by how many fish they caught. They go by how many boxes they filled up. Absolutely. And it was, I mean, that's what they did. And slowly but surely, they grew up with people. I mean, they were older then. I'm sure maybe a few of them are still alive, but probably most of them have passed. Yeah, most of them have passed. No, there's less people doing that, but it can be done. And then Wendy caught these, like I said, under his attractive fish Wendy Marshall rig that he makes. And they were, they were fishing relatively deep, and they got on those sand trout big time. Now, why do you think sand trout isn't as popular? I think because the stigmatism of, oh, speckled trout being the game fish and redfish, I, just the whole fishing culture changed. It used to be just go out and fish and have a good time and catch whatever, right? I mean, that was the thrill of it. But yeah. now, with the influx of um, the bigger boats, bigger engines, guides promoting the speckled trout, the red fishery, that more and more people got... You know, they consider it, oh, man, you know, sand trout's a trash fish. But there's nothing wrong with the sand trout. No, and, you know, the way I think, as a woman who loves to go fishing but also doesn't like to sit and wait for a long period of time because I'm impatient, I think it would be more fun to catch sand trout than to sit and wait for a trout, like a speckled trout. And then with kids, I, I would think it would be more fun with kids to go, to go sand trout fishing. Well, a lot of it has to do with, too, that... You're not going to see sand trout throughout the entire year. No, you're not. So, they start you know, sand trout, gulf trout, whiting, these fish are are more so your fall, uh, early winter fall, fish. early winter, and spring. And so speckled trout for Galveston Bay is a, is a year-round fish. 
redfish for Galveston Bay, the year round fish. It became a game fish, and people like the idea of the the consistent fight of a speckled trout on the top. A sand trout is known to hit really hard and give you bursts of energy. Strong pull, right away. Let then off. Yeah. Strong pull, let off, and then just give it up. But it hits like a ton of bricks. Yeah, they hit hard. So that that's another thing of how they fight, and, and they 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 hit the line is exciting. But they they kind of lose their energy towards the end. And they lose their whole action. So that, that's one of the things. But as far as just catching fish, this is the time of the year to do it. I mean, these fronts start coming through, and the fishing just gets a little better. The weather gets nicer, so I mean, it seems yeah. like the fishing gets better. Especially today. It's like one of those, it, this time of year, there's, you know, is there an advantage to getting out early? Well, maybe a little bit, but a lot of what you can do this time of year is just play the weather and play the front. And it's like a little more leisurely. You don't have to set the alarm at 3 a.m. to catch fish right now. I mean, you can. Yeah, if your biological clock goes off like mine, I'm a, <laughs> no matter what I do, I'm up. Now let's talk about the fronts because obviously it's a little cooler today and fishing the fronts is different than what we've been doing all summer long. It is, yeah, we talked about this at home mm -hmm. and Rebecca and I talked about uh, what would be informative it might not be the sexiest thing to talk about but we talk especially at home but we talk <laughs> we have kids let's keep, let's keep this G -rated. we have kids david <laughs> but we talked about the show what would be at least informative and helpful moving forward we're trying to be a little proactive and not talk about something a month after it's too late so what we wanted to discuss is how to fish these fronts. So Wendy Marshall and Pat Flanagan fished this front yesterday about as well as you can fish a front coming in. And so I wanted to pass this on. Like I said, Rebecca and I talking about it, we said, let's pass this information on. So David, let's get on to that. You know, we're gonna talk about when we see these fronts coming in, what type of opportunity it actually presents to you in a good way. There's negatives that come with a front, but there are also that we're going to tell you about now. So you see these fronts coming. Don't get all down in the dumps and cancel your trip and all that. Look at it from the advantageous standpoint. And maybe you can take uh, take a trip and have a good a good one. Right. So the. You, everybody will know it. This is the time of the year these fronts will start coming through. And as we move on into October, typically they happen seven to every 10 days. It seems like we, we'll start getting fronts. And the fronts will show up, and you can watch. And if we had a map of Texas, you could see it. Let's say this is Texas. So you could just look at, watch the weather. They'll show a front draping in across the northern part of Texas. And typically, the stronger the front, the more south southeast wind and this it will get. And this is north on this map. This is due north. This is due south. Correct. Okay. So as a front approaches the Galveston, the Houston area, the wind will predominantly start to blow from the south southeast. As the front's approaching. As the front is approaching. It normally will pull a south southeast south, wind. Southeast wind. And at times, depending upon how strong the cold front is or how cool the weather is behind it. The stronger the wind is, so you've sure got to the camera. so you've got to plan your trip accordingly. So if you're fishing two or three days prior to a front, be prepared for a pretty strong south southeast wind. This is where it gets technical, folks. We're here, and so we're trying to help you. If you see a a weak front coming, it's not going to pull as much of a of a wind many days prior to the front like yesterday's front <laughs> so yesterday's front because it was a weak front it was just pulling a moderate south wind and wendy was able to go out fishing yesterday and the front hit while he was out there well let me back up i actually the night the day before it was not blowing that strong from the south it was it was just a nice wind uh, nothing, nothing crazy. And then 
as the front was getting much closer the next morning, Wendy was going to go out. And the only reason he didn't go out is because it was raining. And so he waited. And when the rain cleared a little bit, he did go out and it was super calm. It was. It was super calm. Then the front passed while he was out. So the wind picked up out of the north. And he came back in, got into the safe harbor here at Eagle Point from where he was. And they waited for it to pass. And they, it, it blew, it passed through, the wind started calming down a little bit, and they went right back out and caught all those same trees. Yeah. Specific. And they caught, they went, so they left here, they went right back out towards Redfish Island and caught all those same trout. Yeah. And he may have been, I don't know where he was, I didn't ask him, but, you know, Knowing Wendy, he probably played a little bit of that north wind, and he could have been right there behind Redfish Island and got protection from it. So, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. So, what, what we want to make sure is that there's a few things to keep in mind. You want to look at how strong is the front that's coming. We talked about that. Strong front, which that's what we're going to see more in, like, December. Those fronts are going to pull a harder wind from the south a day or two in advance. Then as the front gets closer, it's then going to typically just die. You'll have. That's when, if you can, that's when you want to get out there. Yep, that is correct. There's this idea that the fish will bite before the front. If you can get out there when it's dead calm, that's fantastic. What we want to add to that though, is you then need to be extremely careful that you're watching for the actual front to hit. Because typically every fall, we'll have two or three customers that get caught in a really bad front and it can be a, a very dangerous situation. Yeah, especially the very first real, real cold fronts of the year. Those cold fronts will produce, you know, up upwards of 50, 60 mile an hour winds. So it's, it can be great fishing before the front hits. You want to make sure you don't get caught in the actual front hitting. And then let's talk about right after the front. And then right after a front. So I guess number one is if you're out there fishing in the, the prefrontal passage and it's nice and all of a sudden for some reason you get caught. First thing to do is get to the protected shoreline or get to safe harbor if you can. Clarify that. We're digressing. We apologize. Yeah, we, we're we going wanted, to, we, we we're wanted to make sure we covered this. Yes. If you're out there and in the middle you, of the front. And you get caught. It's beautiful. And you can get caught because it can come through fast. All of a sudden you're not paying attention and the front actually hits. And you it just goes crazy. Wind's blowing and raining. David's gonna talk about do not try to beat the front end. Yeah, don't. It, it, it's too late. Yeah, depending upon where you launched, just be aware of which way the wind's blowing from and get to that protected shoreline. So give, give typically, let's just say you're fishing here towards the middle of Trinity, and then you get a frontal passage and the wind's northwest. So the wind's coming like this. And at, you launch. At, at 40 to 60 miles 40, an hour. Let's say it starts to blow, you know, 25, and you you know it's coming. Do, you know, you launched here at Eagle Point, don't try to make a run back to Eagle Point right then and there. Safest thing to do is just go up to the protected shoreline, get as close as you can to it, and hunker down. And, and in a way, you can even fish up here in that kind of a wind, but stay close and just wait for a little bit because the wind will actually subside fairly quick after the passage of a front. Give them some more examples. And then ease it back down. Um, like. An example is to hide behind here. Hide, hide behind New. Hide back over here. Hide behind New Island. If you're fishing over here in East, you could go back towards the North Shoreline, East Bay. But you got to be aware of where you're fishing and to where your safe harbor is, rather than trying to make a run back into the front or with the front into your marina that you're launched from, especially if you launch from the south. Ralph wants to know what are the visible signs a front is approaching. Black cloud clouds, question mark, wind shift, question mark. Like, what are the actual signs? Like, how do you know? Tremendous frontal uh, cloud line. Yeah, you'll see it. If you look, if you always keep your eyes towards Houston, 
in the northern part of the bay, you will see it depending upon if it's coming out of the northeast or the northwest. Definitely the fronts coming from like San Antonio area, Austin, down into Galveston Bay are the worst by far. If they're coming from the east, northeast, the, the, the storms with them aren't so bad. But a frontal passage out of the northwest, it's a definitely line of black clouds. You will definitely see it. Yeah, what David's saying is that the definite line, Ralph, and the thing that we've noticed here at Eagle Point is that where, where some confusion comes in, and again, why we wanted to cover this, is when a front's coming through, when the front's coming through, the people that get caught a lot of times, you know, will say, well, I didn't know if it was gonna come through. A front is coming through. It's not a thunderstorm. So a thunderstorm, if you're fishing in the middle of the bay and there's a thunderstorm south of you, there's always the chance that the, that the thunderstorm's not gonna come towards you. It's gonna shift or something. Or it'll rain itself out. Or it'll rain itself out. Or you could be fishing in East Bay and storms form all around Seabrook and Kima, but they never go over in East Bay. When a front's coming through, the front is going to come through the bay. You are toast. Well, so, when, toast, when, but it's when, come. No, I mean, when you see the front, it's, it's going to come through the bay. Correct. So nobody is going to get off lightly. So you want to be careful. You don't want to get caught. If you do get caught, the worst thing you can do is try to run in during this front. You can even, at worst, throw out a 100 foot of anchor line and just hold on. That's why you need a lot of anchor line. That's one of the reasons why you have anchor line. So in one of our seminars that we did here at Eagle Point, for our boat storage customers, we talked about having adequate anchor line. 40, 50 foot of anchor line is not adequate anchor line. No, no. not at all. If you get in that sort of situation, you want to be able to throw over about 100 foot of line minimum. And you've got to have the right anchor. And you've got to have the right anchor. Right 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 so you've got before the, before the front, now you have the front that's hitting, and then let's talk about after the front, mm -hmm. because as we told you, Wendy went back Wendy and Pat went back out after the front yesterday. And this front yesterday was a very mild front. I mean, barely even a front. And so these mild fronts, right after the frontal, uh, I guess you'd say after the, 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 the front of the storm passes through and the front now, the, the bulk of the wind and the, the frontal barriers come through. Actually, the wind basically- Just died. There was nothing. You know, there wasn't that strong north wind. So in this particular case, Wendy was able to go back out and they caught these fish. Caught these fish. So you have, you have those two different types of northers. The one that as it's blowing through, it starts blowing and then it keeps blowing. And yes, and typically that will happen. Once, the, once a real northern blows through, y'all, the first, you know, I mean, seriously, I'll, I'll wait specific. till the third day to fish. I will give it two days to blow itself out, and typically the third day after a strong front, it's it starts to get fishable again to where it gets good. Now that's not all the time, that but that's pretty much a, a that's, bet. That's when that's a pretty good bet that that's what happens. That's when the big fronts are hitting. These light fronts in late September, October, even early November, windy went right back out. It was beautiful. So. The point is you need to identify what type of front's hitting, what type of wind is going to be in this front, and you need to be careful. But then at the same time, we're, we're telling you, don't miss out on some of these absolute dream days. That's Yesterday, perfect. Wendy and Pat were fishing in premium conditions before the front and then after the front. And it was after gorgeous. The front. I mean... Yeah, definitely. And the weather predicted doom and gloom all day long, but it never happened. Now talk to them about after a front, about the fishing, as far as the bite. Well, because we talk about on these extreme fronts, it blows two days, maybe three days. Then what happens to the fish bite? Then the fish decide they to get hungry. They get ready to feed. There you go. And depending upon what bait system you're at, and you can catch them in all different parts of the bay system. You can catch them 
around Eagle Point here on the shorelines. Typically, those fish will get shallow and they'll go into a feeding, you know, they'll just go into a feeding frenzy. And uh, fishing after fronts like that, after, you know, pretty cool fronts, is probably my favorite time of the year to fish. Shorelines, reefs right off of shorelines, marsh drains, um, mouths of the rivers, Trinity River, St. Jacinto River, Dickinson Bio, anywhere there's a big push of bait coming out of the marsh or the back part of the bays, the fish go crazy and it's like it's some of the best fishing you'll experience. The fall, October, November, some of the best months of best months to fish Galveston Bay. Hands down, those are my favorite time time of the year to fish. And you just have to be willing to because a lot of times you'll show up to a marina, and this is so true during that time of year about the second or third day after a front, and you'll show up in the morning and the wind's gonna be blowing. It's not uncommon for it to be blowing 15 to 20 miles an hour out of the northeast. But as the day goes on, man, the wind just starts getting a little less, a little less. So you've gotta be willing to um, make the run and go to some protected areas and start off there and then work your way back out in the middle and, and catch fish. One other thing is when you have these severe cold fronts and you've got that strong wind it's our best practice that you're careful about low tide with your boat you know your boat motor and your your actual hull so a strong norther these ones in december january can blow four foot of water out of the bay it's when the water comes back in that you've got a good green clear water, clear water. green water clear water in in our opinion, it's obviously much more fishable. Those right. are those strong northers. But sometimes that, and, but when you know, you've got four foot of water that's out of the bay, you need you to be are, careful. You, you do need to be careful, but you can learn a lot in that shallow water. <laughs> you can. Yeah, you can. You do. You do. You'll see things that you, you're never going to wear. You can see on. your lower unit get knocked off your engine. So, <laughs> but you can also learn a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. A lot of structure. Hey, David, I think you answered this, but do the, have the fish actually ride the fronts down the bay and they move south or north? Typically, in October, November, the fish are moving north. They'll move to the farthest northern points of the bay. So and the reason riding, is that's the bay. They're not riding the front then. Huh? They're not riding the front. They're not the riding the front out. No, no, no. They're going to the north. And they go there for the bay. So they go against the front? They go against the front. They'll move back to the back part of the bays. And then as December rolls around, they make a whole loop back around. And like for Eagle Point, the middle of November, December, this area right here on this short on these shorelines Booming. is just, I mean, it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat everything from Red Bluff, Sylvan Beach, all the way down to Eagle Point. I mean, it's just that northwest part of the bay just gets... Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's where the fish are. I wanted to give my Clear Lake High School buddy, Josh, Josh, Josh. hey buddy. Josh, you might have fished with one of these things. <laughs> I hope everything's going great for you, buddy. It's been a long time since I've seen Josh. Josh is a great friend of mine from Clear Lake High School. But yeah, some old bait casters, buddy. This is the old 5,000. We still use them. <laughs> some things, you know, just don't get better, you know. <laughs> I mean, some things are indestructible. I'm saying, I'm saying sometimes, you know, new isn't better, you know. Right. Look at that old thing. All right, guys. That was... Anything else you guys want to talk about? Any Can questions? Well, hey. No more questions. Uh, We've been answering all the questions. Hey, David. David Fremont's on there. Oh, hey, David. How are you? Hope everything's going Texas great Texas City Dave. Over Texas City Dave. Texas City Dave. Yep, David. And then um, Eric said he hopes your mom's doing okay, David. Eric Litzinger. Oh, okay. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. And then David said hello and thanks for sharing the info. So really, really nice. We're so glad you guys were able to get on here with us today. We started a YouTube channel. Go over the way. Mm -hmm. yep. Galveston Bay Fishing Show is on YouTube. So you can search Galveston Bay Fishing Show. And um, let's talk about what we can expect this weekend. As we what about our up. Facebook page? Galveston Bay Fishing Show Facebook. Yes, and that's what we're streaming from right now. So you all need to like it. See, you should see Galveston Bay Fishing Show is where you're actually watching this video. So if you haven't liked it yet, you need to like it. Um, and then talk about what we can expect for the weekend, guys. I'm like literally leaning in because Facebook, for some reason, went vertical on us again today. So strange. So 
That's yeah. why I got out of the shot because it's there's, too hard for all of us to be in the shot. I'm not leaning in. There. There's a <laughs> there's a couple of things uh, that we we wanted to cover. You know, people we've had a lot of phone calls about bait. We are stocking shrimp. We are stocking croakers. We do not stock finger mullet. So, Dave, Texas City Dave, if you're stocking finger mullet over uh, Boyd's, would you please let us know so we can refer some business to y'all, please? We've had questions about uh, finger mullet and um, mud minnows. Mud minnows, excuse me. So, Texas City Dave, if you'd let us know if you're stocking. Uh, you know, finger mullet and mud minnows. We, we do not do that. We are stocking the smaller croakers. We've talked quite a bit about that, so we won't go into that now, but if you have any questions, uh, let us know and we'll go into it on another show. But we got the smaller croakers. We'll have those probably at least through November. We got a good supply of live trout. And the smaller croakers are working real good with the redfish and the flounder when they start to run, which they're starting now. Right. And then as far as uh, the shrimp are staying consistent at around a 50, 60 count, which that's a beautiful bait size. And we had a few bigger ones coming today, but but it most, mostly, you know, 50, 60s, a few bigger ones mixed in, but we got a good supply of live shrimp. Looks like it's gonna be good for the weekend. And we did forget to tell you that the shrimping has remained great. Yeah, it's been very consistent. Been a, so. It's been a great season for the commercial shrimpers. We're really excited about that. And, you know, we are not in the business of hosting 10 to 15 shrimp boats like we used to, but we normally have four to five shrimp boats now. But in the old days, it was normally 10 to 15. But it's good to see that those boats are doing well. They're making a living. And then uh, lastly, the weather going into this weekend and next week, David. I think uh, this weekend, tomorrow, is supposed to be decent. And I think they're calling for a northeast 5 to 10. They say 5 to 10. I bet you in the morning it's going to be a little harder than 5 to 10. Typically it is. But as the day goes on, the sun comes out, it should lay it down. And then the weekend forecast, of course, they throw back in the rain, which means the front that pass may be washed out and start coming back which would create some rain and some probably east winds out of it. Five to ten is what they're predicting. Five to ten is not bad. A little bit of rain, hopefully no thunderstorms, and you can fish around it. You know, the lightning is the that's a scary part, part, folks. If you, you know, if you get caught out there in a lightning storm, it's just not fun. But other than that, it looks like the weekend should be halfway decent. It looks like the weather's going to, you know, be a little iffy, but as far as the wind, we should be good. Oh, good. These guys need to come out and catch some sand trout with their families. They do. Or some Why trout, drum. Or regular this trout, is the time redfish, of year. Redfish. Anything. Yeah. Flounder. Yeah. The redfish are still around. The speckled trout are still around. Sand trout are here for, for the taking if you want them. The drum are here. I mean, this is the time of year to get out and catch a variety of fish. And that's what makes this time of year fun. Yeah. And you can always reach Captain David or myself or captain wendy marshall or rob who works here at eagle point one of our all-stars it's his birthday today happy birthday rob happy, happy birthday, birthday rob. rob rob's rob's an mvp for us and you can reach us at eagle point at 281-339-1131 and then thanks for watching the galveston bay fishing show as you know we always say we try uh, to improve our content it's our goal to only get better so we appreciate you participating, the ones that are and, and the viewers, and uh, we're striving to bring you some content. So and look forward we want to, to hear you. from them. Yeah. What's your, what want, do you want us to We want to, to hear about? from y'all on what you want to hear about. And uh, as we get closer- That would give us some ideas too, y'all. So yeah. As, as yeah. we get closer to uh, the slower season for us, we'll be able to bring uh, a variety of content. We, we have a lot of good ideas already on paper. So, so, so stay with us. Okay. And we'll see y'all next Thursday. Thursday. Great. God willing. God willing. <laughs> Thank Always. Thank you.